Ever heard the saying, raised by women to defeat men? Well, that's the story of Jimmy Connors. His mum and grandma were his coaches and he turned out great. But along the line, he ended up marrying someone nobody would expect. What is it about her? And what else is there to find out about Jimmy's family? Well, stick around as we find out together. This is the family of Jimmy Connors. Father, James Connors. Jimmy Connor's father, who was fondly called Big Jim, worked as a toll bridge attendant and was the son of the mayor of East St. Louis. Jimmy's dad took care of the East St. Louis Bridge, while Gloria, his wife, took care of the house, including grocery shopping, laundry, meal preparation, and other household duties. James served as the bridge's manager between East St. Louis and St. Louis for the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Bridge. But sadly, at the age of 53, he died of cancer at St. Elizabeth Hospital. Mother, Gloria Connors. Gloria Connor's story is one of a great tennis mum who will live on in history. She wasn't the usual mum we know. In the 1940s, she was a former tennis player who competed in the US National Championship. She loved tennis and had previously defeated the young Olympian Babe Didrikson in a match. As a tennis teacher who learned from her mum, she was determined to pass down the same knowledge to her sons. By the time Gloria was pregnant with her second son, Jimmy, she had constructed a tennis court in her backyard using borrowed tools from a nearby construction crew. Few could tell she was prepared for the coming of her child more like the coming of Jesus Christ. The tennis court she built was where Jimmy would learn to play and master the game of tennis. When Jimmy reached the age of two, they began practicing every day. It was straight to business. Jimmy was so small that Gloria even had to cut off half the handle from his racket. How hilarious. At first, he was too small to hit a one-handed backhand. I mean, the ball could throw him to the ground. Imagine if a two-year-old was on the court for a match. Yeah, that feeling. So due to this, Gloria had to advise him to use two hands. At the time, a two-handed backhand was non-existent in tennis, and that turned out to be Jimmy's signature weapon, along with his return of serve. After a while, they repeatedly tried the stand and backhand until he eventually didn't need the extra reach. According to Jimmy, he would eventually be taught a women's game. The way she played was very compact and easy, with no excess motion. Gloria's mother, Bertha Thompson, who was also a superb tennis player, always went out with them every day. Gloria and Jimmy practiced all day, every day. Their training sessions were exciting and she consistently outperformed him. Gloria always instructed Jimmy to attempt to strike the ball down her throat. And eventually he figured out how to do it after learning that she would happily strike the ball down if given a chance. She wasn't going to let him off easy and Gloria's tough love would turn out to be justified. In spite of all these, Jimmy was never pressured excessively to play tennis. Unlike the latest tennis wonder kids who were sent off to academies where their lives revolved around tennis as little kids, Gloria knew the negative effects of pushing too hard and chose to protect him from burning out. Jimmy's 13th birthday necessitated the family's relocation to Belleville, Illinois. Because the city lacked indoor courts, Gloria used to pick Jimmy up from school and take him to the St. Louis Armory so he could compete against the best players in the region. She used to discuss tennis extensively while driving back home and remained in the car while he was on the court. She was just so passionate about seeing him become a star, but she wasn't desperate. The long drive home was how Jimmy learned everything about tennis. His mother studied tennis and loved tennis more than anybody he ever saw. Gloria, Bertha and Jimmy started going to tournaments together as Jimmy's game progressed. At the age of 16, Jimmy finally won a game over Gloria. The student would finally outwit the master, and in that moment, it was the day she had been waiting for. Five years later, Jimmy started a run of 160 weeks straight at the top of the tennis world rankings. Thanks to the fluid technique and feline approach, he had an unusually long career and was ranked in the top 10 for 16 years. Gloria accompanied her son to tournaments and acted as his manager, negotiating his shoe contracts and offering advice on everything life had to offer. She helped her son develop the competitive spirit and tennis prowess that have made him one of the sport's all-time greats. As we mentioned in the beginning, having a mother who coached and encouraged him was not always easy for Jimmy. His relationship with his mother and grandmother was frequently made fun of. The sexist, unsolicited opinions of people were a subject Jimmy had to defend repeatedly over the years. After all, no one criticizes or raises questions about a father who instills his passion for sport in his son, but the mother-son relationship in Jimmy's family was always a subject of controversy. He once recalled a time when, as a child, some boys beat his mother for asking them to turn down their music on a public tennis court. She suffered severe beatings and lost many teeth. At the time, Jimmy felt completely helpless watching his mum suffer. Gloria lived a fulfilled life and died in Belleville at the age of 82. A few years after Jimmy started making waves in the tennis world, he was so popular among the girls. At a point in 1974, he was engaged to his fellow tennis pro, Chris Everett, before he met his wife, Patty Maguire. However, a string of unfortunate events derailed his relationship with Chris Everett and they had to call off the wedding. Chris revealed once that she saw Jimmy in the stands with a different woman when the couple was going through a difficult time. Even though their relationship was going through a difficult time, Chris had remained optimistic that they could work things out. From 1976 to 77, Jimmy was also engaged to former Miss world Marjorie Wallace. However, in 1979, he eventually wed Playboy model Patty Maguire.
Patty is well known for her work as a fashion model, businesswoman, movie star, and production manager. She began modeling while still at high school, student, and homecoming queen. Patty could not resist the call of fame, which thrust her into the forefront of the spotlight during her time. She considered herself to be an Irish beauty. Along with her two younger siblings, she was raised in St. Louis. Patty debuted severally on Playboy one of the most recognized entertainment magazines in the world. Initially, she was Playmate of the Month for the November 1976 issue, and the next year, she was named Playmate of the Year. She juggled being a bunny and a student at Southern Illinois University, where she majored in political science while working at the Playboy Club in St. Louis before getting her big break as a model. In Playboy clubs, Playboy bunnies were hired as waitresses. Unexpectedly, she was presented with a modeling opportunity right in the middle of the club where she had previously worked. Patty later made an appearance in 1978 on the back glass of a Playboy pinball machine. Hugh Hefner and fellow Playmate Son Sandra Theodore joined her in a photo for the article that went down in history but featuring an interview with Jimmy Carter, who went on to win a presidential election. More than 18,000 pinball machines were later purchased. Being one of the most popular personalities in sports at the time, Jimmy used to frequent Hugh Hefner's mansion. During one of the establishment's parties, Patty noticed Jimmy, who was accompanied by a fellow playmate. It was love at first sight, which quickly blossomed into marriage. Take a look at Patty in the 70s. I would have fallen in love with her at first sight also. Since she has been with Jimmy, Patty has been his loyal supporter during his whole professional life. She even coped with infidelity that almost led to a divorce from her husband. In his biography, Jimmy got candid about his relationships. Apart from opening up about his struggles with dyslexia and gambling, he also revealed that he cheated on Patty, confronted by divorce, and begged her for forgiveness. After getting a second chance from Patty that saved their marriage, Jimmy claims he never strayed again. They have been together for more than 40 years now, and they have two children, a son named Brett and a daughter, Aubrey. Son, Brett Connors. Having grown up around tennis, Brett was a fan of watching and participating in tennis. Being around his father instilled some sort of me-against-the-world mentality in him when it came to playing sports, and that was the case with tennis. He's a huge NFL fan, however, he never played organized football, but it is by far his favorite to follow. He's more of a casual tennis player, but while growing up, he played a lot, especially when he would travel with his father during summers when he was still on tour or playing team tennis or the senior tour. Brett also learned the game from his grandmother, Gloria. She gave Brett his fundamentals and taught him about what it took to be great. Although he claims he didn't end up being great, he feels her teachings gave him a unique aspect of the game itself, and now he uses this when watching the sport, analyzing for his job, or just when playing it with friends. Brett played at the junior level until he was around 13 years old, and then he got introduced to golf, which he fell in love with. He played golf in high school all four years at the varsity level, and because tennis and golf were played during the same season, he chose golf. One reason was that he liked it more because he was better at it. He also played golf in college for a couple of years at the University of Arizona until a wrist injury interrupted his plans. He still plays when he visits his dad, as Jimmy is also a rabid golfer who plays with his friends a few times a week. Brett went to the University of Arizona for two years before taking a break to intern with the Phoenix Suns and do some work on his father's senior tour for a couple of years. He ended up getting his degree from Cal State University at Northridge, where he majored in communication with a minor in business studies. Let's learn about his daughter, Aubrey Connors. Aubrey, a spin instructor, is widely known as the daughter of Jimmy Connors. She's quite low-key and lives her life away from the spotlight. Not much is actually known about her, but we do know that she's married and she celebrated her wedding with her parents in a beautiful intimate ceremony. Oh, we almost forgot. Jimmy had a brother, John. Let's talk about him. Brother, John Connors. Jimmy grew up with his brother John, and sometimes they would practice together with their mum. But John wasn't really cut out for tennis anyway, although he was always supportive of Jimmy. Not many people knew about John at first, but he came to the spotlight in 1991 when he founded a casino called Aston Bell. He had appeared in TV commercials promoting his casino. Since Alton Bell had a monopoly in Missouri and Illinois, John invested the casino's profits back into the parent company, Argo C Gaming Company. It's a business that the brothers own the same number of stocks in. Each brother owns shares worth about $70 million. Unfortunately, the value of the company's stock to Increase rapidly. After losing some big bucks, the once close brothers appear to have grown apart as a result of the casino venture. However, recently, on November 23rd, 2022, John passed away. Jimmy took to Twitter to pay his last respect to his brother. He tweeted, I am sad to say I'm heartbroken after saying goodbye to my brother, John, at this memorial service on Sunday. No more needs to be said. Thanks for always being there. RIP, bro. Enjoyed this family video? Then check out our other videos on the family of famous tennis stars.